Hello, hello, Kelly Kennedy here, and I want to gift you the idea of change, and change is the, one of the most difficult things um, for a human being, really. I, I feel I have been on this journey of wellness for a very long time, on this seeking journey for a very long time, and change is the thing that is constant. Life is change in motion, and yet change seems to be difficult for human beings. It's a very funny dichotomy. We all know we need to change, but sometimes it's difficult for us to make the steps of changing. So I'm going to offer you Kelly Kennedy's three steps to incorporate change into your life. So step one is awareness. Just become aware of whatever it is you want to change. Maybe it's a, a, a thought process. Maybe it's you want to catch yourself in your thoughts. Maybe it's you want to notice how much you're clenching your jaw. Or maybe it's whatever the awareness is about. Maybe it's a tick. Maybe it's biting your fingernails. Maybe it's playing with your hair. Whatever the action is in your life that you want to change, the first step is awareness. Noticing when you do it. Noticing it. Maybe you say um before you go to speak. Maybe you say maybe too much. So whatever the thing is, the step one is awareness. So whatever you want to change, you first have to have to have an awareness about it. Step two, I really give credit to Dr. Joe Dispenza in reading so many of his books, but particularly how to change the habits of being you. He brought into this concept of the word change and saying it out loud. And I've incorporated that with a little neuro list, neuro linguistic programming I'm not trained in that. I've just known a little bit about it. And knowing that when we touch the body, particularly with our fingers, we're shifting the gears of the body. So step one is awareness. Step two is saying out loud the word change while taking your index fingers and touching. Just gently. You're not pushing hard. You're just touching where the jaw opens. Ah, uh, There's a lot to this. A lot of reasoning behind why I have people apply the awareness right here it's because it's one of the areas of the body that tries to lock in a lot of our emotions a lot of things we didn't say a lot of times we had to bite our tongue and we held it right here in this tension in the jaw so by just placing our fingers and telling the body out loud change it's kind of like taking your computer and it's going down this program that you don't like and what do you do you hit control alt and delete and you reset your computer, you're rebooting the operating system. We are an operating system. This autonomic nervous system is its operating system that runs automatically, but it can be controlled by us when we have a consciousness about it. For instance, blinking my eyes happens without me being conscious. Breathing happens without be me being conscious. And these are beneficial to the organism. However, I can override that system and I can consciously blink my, blink my eyes and I can consciously control and be conscious of my breath. So step one is awareness. Step two is saying out loud, whatever that behavior is, when I notice it, I'm going to say change. I'm going to say it out loud. It might not be appropriate at that very moment that occurs. Maybe you're in line at Target and you're noticing the anger inside your body all of a sudden because the person ahead of you is taking too long or they're on their phone or whatever the thing is that's angering you and you're like, I don't want this anymore in my life. I want to change it. Then I'm going to have an awareness about it. Then I'm going to say out loud to myself, change. If I'm in line at Target, somebody's making me upset and I don't feel comfortable, it make me too uncomfortable to say change out loud, Kelly Kennedy would say that, but you might not be willing to, then just say it quietly to yourself and when you get outside, when you're by yourself, do the practice of saying it out loud and going change. Then step three, this is the most important part. Things only move if we move. Lymph only moves if we move. Emotions only move if we move. And if we don't move, we hold on to that burden. So step one is awareness. Step two is saying change. Step three is now moving and wiggling. So when I ask people to incorporate this practice, I'm doing it because I want them to become aware of when they're clenching, when they're holding on rather than letting go. So it's about making that opportunity for your body to not hold on, but to actually change and move. It could be as simple as 
um, I get angry every time I have to stand in line. I don't know, I'm just making things up. I actually don't like to stand in line. But if I get angry every time I have to stand in line and I notice my blood pressure goes up, is that doing me any good? No. I mean, lines happen. People have to stand in line sometimes. So I can just say, hey, body, physiologically, I don't want you to create that tension just because we have to stand in line. So I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm going to notice it. I'm going to say change. And then I'm going to wiggle and move. And it might not, it doesn't have to be an overt move. It can be as simple as I'm going to move my arm, but I'm just not going to hold because I can guarantee you what you will notice, regardless of what you want to change is that when you notice that your body is behaving in this old pattern way, this, this pattern that you no longer want as part of your life, there is somewhere in your body you're holding, you're clenching, you're tightening, you're tense. And creating an awareness in your body of where that tension is, is the first step to being free of that burden. Step one is awareness. The second step of being free of that burden is allowing your body an opportunity to change it. Control, delete, reset it by acknowledging it and bringing your awareness to it by bringing your autonomic nervous system going change. And now the, the computer, the autonomic part of us going, whoa, don't behave the same way you've always behaved. Make a conscious choice. And step three is moving. And when I move, I'm physiologically shifting my fascia. I'm shifting my lymph. I'm draining things out. I'm letting things go. I'm, ugh, I'm exhaling. I'm sighing out relief. And I'm allowing the body to recover and heal and be in that parasympathetic mode and let that burden go so that I can continue to change and grow and expand. This is my gift to the world of what I've learned and how to make changes. I'm not saying that change is easy and consciously we continue to make changes in our life and expand and to get the things in our life that we want. But first we must be aware of the patterns that are creating our old version of ourselves over and over again. And to be able to change those in thought life, to be able to change those in our emotional life, to be able to change those in our spirit life allows us to change the manifestation in our physical 3D life, because all of life is more emotional, more frequency, more vibration than it is physical. And the quicker we can learn that, the quicker we can learn our patterns, the quicker we can become aware of our patterns and change our patterns and move, the quicker we're going to evolve and be that person inside that we know we are, that we are have been up until this point afraid of showing but I invite you to no longer be afraid. Change with me, won't you? And come with me and allow the world to see your beautiful, unique inner beauty within you. I see you. I see your beauty. Do you? From my heart to yours, this is Kelly Kennedy. How to Change.